Amen, amen. God bless you, family of God. It's your brother once again, DJ Sam Rock, here on The Blaze Bible Study every Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here at soulwinnerswithaz.org. God bless you. I hope you're having a great week. Amen. This is a, a powerful day for me. Why? Because I'm breathing, I'm alive, and I'm able to teach, preach, um, listen to the Word of God, speak the Word of God, apply the Word of God into my life, and hopefully you will apply, listen, and speak the Word of God into your life as well. Amen. So I'm, I'm, I'm blessed just to be a part of the kingdom, to be a part of what God is doing in the 21st century, to be a part of everything that's going on. Amen. And that's just something to be amazed about because God is who he says he is and he's going to do what he said he is going to do. Amen. And everything that you find in the word of God that speaks truth, because it is truth, um, is available to us as well. Um, unless you're not uh, a Christian or Christ follower or you're not um, devoted or you're not consecrated or you're not separated um, for the use of God, you're not sanctified or you haven't set Jesus Christ uh, set him apart in your heart. Amen. Um, if you're not involved in what the kingdom of God is doing, amen, my question to you right now before we pray is why? And that could just open up a whole lot of things. Amen. Um, but the question still stands. Why? What is it in your life that's keeping you back from a personal relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? What is it? Because we could go all day blaming Christians for this and that and the church and the denominations and why this and why that. But it all boils down to the one person, the Lord Jesus Christ. Why or what is it that's keeping you away from a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ? Amen. Something for you to, you know, just to think about, ponder about. Amen. Just sit back, but listen, you know, listen. I was going to say relax. And listen at the same time. So re-listen. <laughs> so relax and enjoy what you're going to hear. Because it's coming from the word of God. It's powerful. It's alive. It's active. Amen. And it's available to you. So let's pray and come into agreement. So all the saints that are listening. Let's pray for those people who are listening right now. Who don't have a personal relationship with God. But they're seeking. Amen. And that's a good place to do to be, to seek. Amen. So saints, join with me in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for the opportunity to spread your gospel, the good news of your son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I pray for a supernatural level of increase tonight, Lord God, that you would do a great new thing in this Bible study and that many will be touched by your power and that many will be rescued and saved and really brought out from the darkness into your marvelous light tonight, Lord God. I pray that your Holy Spirit will listen, um, teach, and people will listen to your Holy Spirit, and that you, Lord God, will get the glory, honor, worship, and praise. I pray this all in the matchless name, in the name that's above every other name, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So tonight we're going to be talking about how to stay on point. How do we stay on point as Christians, as the church body, as the body of Christ? What is the church? What's the mission? How do we stay on point? Because I know the culture is saying one thing about us. And sometimes it's true. Not that what they're saying about the church is true. But sometimes the behavior that they're speaking about that they're not feeling right now is somewhat true. Um, but when it comes to the gospel, the church, the mission, the word of God is the word of God. And the word of God remains true all the time. Amen. Not just some of the time, but the word of God remains true all the time. So the church has a mission and the church has to go to a mission. And the mission of the church, the body of Christ, is to spread the gospel. The gospel is the good news of Jesus Christ. Amen. How would someone ever know about the gospel unless someone speak it, spoke it, excuse me, or unless somebody preached it, unless somebody taught it? Unless it was given to somebody. Amen. The gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ is like no other uh, worldview in the whole entire planet. It's like no other uh, God, uh, God sense or like no other story 
available to any religion. Amen. And I thank God that being a Christian is not a religion. There's religious activity involved in Christianity, but as a whole, in its essence, it's not a religion. It's a relationship, a personal relationship at, at that. It's personal, but it's not private, but a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Then what happens? You're being transformed. You're being renewed um, from glory to glory, day to day. That doesn't mean the problems are going to all go away. It just means that you're saved, you're forgiven, you're rescued. Amen. You have a new mindset and you're going forward towards the finish line that God has already placed in front of you. Amen. With his power. Wow. That'll be an amazing journey. Amen. No matter what comes your way, it could be sickness, disease, uh, it could be uh, depression, anxiety, whatever the case may be. When you're a Christian, a Christ follower, you have the living God, the hope of glory living in you. Amen. That has all power available to you. Amen. You have to believe it. It's not like um, pie in the sky stuff. This is real stuff. And if I had time, I, I would tell you my testimony. I've shared my testimony several times on The Blaze. But um, to do a clip of it, I didn't grow up in the church of Jesus Christ. I didn't grow up as, you know, a straight A student. I didn't grow up in, you know, a rich neighborhood. I didn't grow up with opportunities just falling on my lap. No. I grew up in a humble situation in the projects of Brooklyn, New York. Amen. Uh, we did some Catholic school, so we did some religious stuff. Um, but most of the time, it was about mom and dad and about family and friends and what was going on in the neighborhood. So out of that, when things were bad, things were bad. When things were good, things were good. There was no real foundational hope that we were holding on to. We were just holding on to um, what we knew and we were holding on to our parents. We were holding on to what little we had. And we made, with what little we had, we made through, made, made it through. So I'm not speaking to you as I've always been a Christian or I'm rich. or No, I'm speaking to you as a, a, a man that had a humble beginning. And I'm still humble about where I'm at now. Amen. And God is real. Amen. That's just a clip. But God is real. So there's a mission of the church. There's a mission, first of all, to how to stay on point. We got to know what we're staying on point for, and that's a mission. The mission is to spread the gospel, the good news. And in order for us to do that day by day, we have to be in outreach mode because God has done an inner thing. He has changed our innermost parts, our inner being. He has done the inner reach. And then once he um, knows that we're available and we're receptive to his inner reach, then we could do the outreach. And we could do the evangelism. Evangelism is just spreading the good news, spreading the message. Outreach is being out there, being outside of the four walls of the church. And the church is a great place that we get all the tools. We're, we're being equipped by our pastors, the apostles of the church, the pastors, the teachers. We're being equipped to do the works of the ministry. Amen. So that's a good place to be. But then we have to go out. We have to go out with what we have inside. It has to come out of us. Amen. The Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So if, if the abundance of the heart has love, peace, joy, um, you know, all of that, the nine gifts, if it has all of that inside of our heart, it will eventually come out of our mouths. And people need hope in this world. Right now, people need so much hope. When we have a missional um, view of things, we're responding to a need. And there's plenty of needs out there, plenty of needs out there. Trust me. You know it. I know it. There's a need in every category from A to Z. We should be the voice of hope. You want to stay on point? Be a voice of hope. We should see healings all around. Not all the time, but all around. Amen. And what I mean by that is not only in the physical healing, there should be healing in relationships. There should be healings in marriages. There should be healings uh, through forgiveness. There should be healings in the physical as well. Amen. But we always have to remember we live in a fallen world. Amen. God is good and always, all the time. So we can't just um, blow things off. We always have to remember that God is doing great work and he's doing great things in our hearts and our minds. Amen. So that'll always be a good thing for us to know and to 
to learn and to agree with. Amen. Um, if you heard some echo in the beginning of, you know, of this recording, forgive me. I had the uh, one line up at the same time. If I need to, I'll um, redo this episode, this, this black Bible study, if it was too far out um, with the echo. I apologize. Also, if you have the missionary, the missional view of things and a missional perspective, we have to be accessible. We have to be accessible. We have to be able to live out the gospel. When I mean accessible, I mean we have to be available. I mean, we all have, a, I have a busy life. If you look at my calendar, amen, you look at me like I'm nuts because you're like, man, you work full time and you do basically, I say it's part time ministry, but when you look at my calendar, it's another full time thing. So, um, we're all busy. I know I am. But accessibility, amen, um, should be priority, amen. First to your family. First to your family. I'll repeat that because I know there's people that are gun ho right now doing ministry and completely forget they have a wife, children, you know, family members, amen. Right now, I'm on a, I feel like I'm on an abandoned island somewhere when it comes to my family, um, my immediate family, my brothers and my sister and my son and my mom. Uh, you know, just, just issues going on right now. But amen. Um, but I'm accessible. I'm available. Um, if they're listening to these Bible studies, they know that I'm doing something in the kingdom, um, but I'm still here. Amen. A great thing about technology and about the internet about all this that's going on um, is that um, when I'm long gone these podcasts will be available for the next generation and the next generation to hear it unless it's completely wiped off the internet for some odd reason amen so we need to be a voice of hope we need to uh, promote holistic healing holistic healing like total healing amen from body spirit mind everything and we have to be accessible to stay on point. Living out the gospel means that we need to have authentic faith. Not a fake faith. Not a faith in faith, but an authentic faith. Let me show you what I mean. Uh, let's go in the Bible. And we're going to go to uh, Matthew chapter, uh, let's see. Matthew chapter 9 verse 35. Amen. Matthew chapter 5 verse 35. You're going to hear 9 verse 35. You're going to hear the clicking of my mouse when I get to these verses. Amen. So just bear with me and we'll read it here. Jesus traveled through all the cities. Everybody say all the cities. Jesus traveled through all the cities and villages of that area teaching in the synagogues and announcing the good news about the kingdom he wasn't saying hey let's start a religion he wasn't saying hey come um let's gather and create a tax to force people to follow us no jesus said um he was announcing the good news about the kingdom wherever he went he healed people of every sort of disease and illness so wherever jesus went he what he healed people of every sort of disease and illness. He felt great pity for the crowds that came because their problems were so great and they didn't know where to go for help. Sounds familiar? Sounds like a, a culture without hope. Sounds like a nation without hope. Sounds like a family without hope. Sounds like a friend without hope. They don't know where to go for help. Amen? They were like sheep without a shepherd. He said to his disciples, the harvest is so great, but the workers are so few. So pray to the Lord who is in charge of the harvest. Ask him to send out more workers for his fields. So let's pray that right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask that you who is in charge of the harvest, I ask, Lord God, that you would send out workers for your fields. Amen. In Jesus name. Powerful right there. He wants us to ask for help. People are walking around hopeless. We need to be on point. We need to stay on point. We need to know how to lead people to a place of hope. 
We need to know how to um, be accessible. We need to know how to live out an authentic faith. Why? Because people are watching. Can't you see in Matthew 9.35 um, where Jesus was traveling, people were following. Wherever he went, he healed people of every sort of disease and illness. He saw the crowds. He had great pity for the crowds. Um, their problems were so great. Do you have a problem that's so great and you're walking aimlessly around in life and you don't know where to find help? Well, Jesus said he is in charge of the harvest. He'll send workers your way because there's people praying for you. That person who feels like there is no way out. That person who has an illness, a sickness, a disease that the doctors say is terminal. I got news for you. People are praying that off your body, out of your body, in the name of Jesus. People are there praying for families to be restored. People are praying for their prodigal son and prodigal daughter that left the ways of the Lord. They're praying them back into the kingdom of God. People are praying because we know in the name of Jesus that the body of Christ knows who the hope of glory is. And the hope of glory lives within every single Christian, every single person who follows the Lord Jesus Christ. So authentic faith, we need to live in it. We need to be authentic because people are watching. Church growth to kingdom advancement. It's always good to see churches that are growing. Amen. I'm not one to particularly um, promote a church, although uh, I go to a great church, Third Day Worship Center in Allentown, Pennsylvania, Hanover Avenue, 1700 block. You know, worship service every Sunday. English is at 10. Spanish is at 1230. Amen. See, I'm promoting it. But I'm not the one to particularly say, hey, my church is the best. My church is the only church in the valley that, you know, preaches worry, speaks. I don't know that. I can't say that because I don't go to every other church. I go to my church where I found bread. Amen. Where the pastors are in love with Jesus and in love with the souls. And they want to see people saved, restored, renewed. And they want kingdom advancement as well. But church growth needs to be for kingdom advancement. Church growth should never be just for a body of believers to get so swelled up and big with money, with um, you know this, that, and a third that they forget about everybody else outside. Amen. Um, there would be a temptation if I was in a mega church um, to just hide out. That would be the temptation because then you know, hey, there's thousands of people here, nobody will know. But when you're building and when your church is growing. It needs to be for kingdom advancement. Amen. That means that all tribes and all nations will be impacted by what's going on for the kingdom. Church growth is great. Amen. But it needs to be attached to kingdom advancement. You know, you heard the phrase use them or lose them. Amen. We need to use every single gift that is offered in the body of Christ, in your church, in my church, for kingdom advancement. If you don't use what's in the house, a lot of times you lose what's in the house. Amen. Um, I always have to remind myself that man never qualifies me to do the work of the kingdom. God is the one who qualified me to do the works in the kingdom. Amen. We are to obey our authorities, our leaders. Amen. Absolutely 100%. But if they don't say go and use your gift or your talent amen or your ability if they say don't do it or if they never recognize it that doesn't mean that you don't have it that doesn't mean that you don't do anything that means that you just don't recognize it or they may have a check in their spirit like wait not right now because there's issues or there's things in your life that needs to be adjusted or worked through amen that's perfectly fine too but create a voice and create a platform. Use what you have and create a voice and create a platform. Years ago when God spoke to me um, through an evangelist that was watching a DVD curriculum, um, the evangelist seemed like he was speaking to me. You ever had those moments? It seems like um, the person 
um, that you're watching speaking directly to you through the power of the Holy Spirit. Basically, that's what happened with this ministry. Um, I was looking at a DVD curriculum. Uh, the man in the DVD said, use whatever technology, whatever means you can to spread the gospel, whether it be a video, a podcast, or whatever. When he said podcast, I was like, what in the world? Is a I didn't even know what a podcast was. Um, I knew it had to do with um, Apple products and, you know, iPhones and all that. But I didn't know, or the Apple store, I didn't know what a podcast necessarily was. So then I looked it up on the internet and I said, whoa, I think I could do that. How much does it cost? And when I found out it was free, I jumped all on that. God dealt with me with some issues beforehand. And then when I was ready... When God said I was ready, amen, I started doing Bible studies right there uh, through my telephone at the time. It sounded incredibly horrible. <laughs> the quality was not good. But it was a way to create a voice and a platform. And from there, it grew. By the time I abandoned that network because of the sound quality, I wanted better sound quality. By the time it was all said and done, there was over 100,000 listeners. Amen. Listening to a man just doing Bible studies through a phone line. Why? Because people are looking for hope. People want change. They won't admit it, but they want change in their life. I know a lot of people that are well off money financially and it seems like they have it all together. You know, the picket fence, the dog, the wife, the car, the nice house. But when you look in their eyes, they're without hope and they're disappointed and they're not fulfilled because God created a God-sized like distance in your heart that you will never be satisfied with the things of this world because they come and they go and they're circumstantial when you're doing good and your bank account is good you're happy when the bank account is not so good and things are going bad or you're dealing with a health issue then you're not happy anymore. That's based on circumstance. God wants to give us joy. Whether or not we're rich or poor or healthy or sick, that joy never um, goes away. God wants to give us joy and peace. Amen. In this life, not when we're in heaven. He wants to do it now. Because once we're in heaven, praise the Lord, we'll be perfected and we'll have a heavenly body. Um, right now we have an earth shell to live on this side of eternity. But when we're in heaven, we'll have the heavenly shell to live on that side of eternity, which is, by the way, way longer than what it is now. Right. So if I live to be 70 years old, praise the Lord. But in eternity, that's like a, a blink of an eye. That's like a blink of an eye. So use what you have. Be more intentional. You want to be on point and stay on point? Be more intentional. What exactly do you want to do? And be intentional on doing it. Whether you want to start a small group Bible study, whether you want to learn one-on-one um, -on -one from the pastors, whether you want to be on an outreach team, if you want to work with the youth, you be intentional of what you want to do. If you want to feed the homeless. So many things, there's so many needs. I could go on and on and on for a whole program if, and I won't have enough time to remind you of all the needs that are out there. But be more intentional this year, today. Start tonight to be more intentional. Pray more. Amen. To read the scriptures, read the Bible more. Be intentional. Build teams. I know I can't do this alone. Thank God for my wife and for friends, amen, that believe in this ministry. I can't do it alone. So build teams. Collaborate. Collaborate. Doesn't mean that um, you're the boss or the other person. No, just collaborate. Put your talents and gifts together to glorify the Lord. Amen. To reach all tribes and all nations. Wow. There's a lot here. We need to start building and empowering others. Can you imagine just being all built up in spirit and truth? Amen. And knowing scriptures and, and you know, Performing miracles and people are coming to Christ. Imagine just building that yourself as a central power. Amen. Just to be noted, noted for all those things. 
and yet you never empowered others. That would be a shame, actually. That, that wouldn't be too cool. Because at the end, we're going to be held responsible, accountable. And God's going to ask us, what did you do with the things that I gave you? What did you do with the life that I gave you? Did you reach out to others? And if you say, no, but I did this, I did that, you know, I, I grew. I was the central uh, power here. I don't think that would be too good in front of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, when I, if I gain crowns, amen, and you got to read this in scripture about the crowns, I'm going to put that crown down at the feet of Jesus. Amen. Um, but that's another topic. Your model should be everyone plays. Everyone should be involved in what's going on in kingdom advancement. Of course, um, the disclaimer is that you have to be filled with the Holy Spirit to play in the game of life that reaches other people with the eternal promise, the, the eternal life promise of the Lord Jesus Christ. You have to be filled with the Spirit. But everyone should be able to play once they're filled with the Spirit of God, once they're saved, once they're renewed. Amen. And if you're not saved, get in the game. Because sooner or later, amen, you're going to want to be on the winning team. Who wants to be on a losing team all the time? You know, when I used to play basketball, I wasn't always the first pick. Well, when I was younger, I was always the first pick. Now that I'm older, I'm not definitely not the first pick. I'm like the third, fourth. Maybe I don't even get picked. There's been a lot of times I walked off the basketball court, nobody picked me. Amen. So I played it off like I'm still cool. But everybody was like, nah, we don't want the old man. <laughs> but um, I just have that, that in me just to be in the game, to get in the game. Amen. Whether... I could uh, perform or not uh, perform to other people's standards. It doesn't matter. I want to be in the game. And if it was up to me and I was on a court and whether or not I knew about your skills or not, I would want everyone to play. Create a culture where everyone contributes. Create a culture where everyone contributes. If you go to 1 Peter, amen, and um, 1 Peter Chapter 2, verses 1 to 9. And we're going to hit 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 1 to 9. And let me just get this here. The Bible says, So get rid of all malicious behavior and deceit. Uh, don't just pretend to be good. Be done with hypocrisy and jealousy and backstabbing. You must crave pure spiritual milk so that you can grow into the fullness of your salvation cry out cry out for this nourishment as a baby cries for milk now that you have had a taste of the lord's kindness verse 4 come to christ who is the living cornerstone of god's temple he was rejected by the people but he is precious to god who chose him you ever felt rejected for your faith in Christ? But you're so precious to God because he chose you. Amen. Verse 5. And now God is building you as living stones into his spiritual temple. What's more, you are God's holy priests who offer the spiritual sacrifices that please him because of Jesus Christ. As the scriptures express it, I am placing a stone in Jerusalem, a chosen cornerstone, and everyone, anyone who believes in him will never be disappointed. Hope never disappoints. Yes, he is very precious to you who believe. But for those who reject him, the stone that was rejected by the builders has now become the cornerstone. Verse 8, and the scripture also says, He is the stone that makes people stumble, the rock that will make them all fall. Wow. Wow. They stumble because they do not listen to God's word or obey it. And so they meet the fate that has been planned for them. Verse 9, but you are not like that. For you are a chosen people. You are a kingdom of priests. God's holy nation, his very own possession. This is so you can show others the goodness of God. For he called you out of the darkness into his wonderful light. Praise the Lord. We need to create that kind of culture in the body of Christ to advance the kingdom. If people see that, amen, 
they see that activated in our lives, they're going to want what we have. And what we have is the living hope, the hope of glory. We have Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and protector, guardian. He guides. He provides. He, he's still God. Amen. And there's so much more. But I ran out of time. God bless you. God keep you. Hope you got something out of this. How to stay on point in this 21st century culture. Amen. Just do what the word says, right? Practice it. Believe it. Activate it. Apply it. Until the next time, remember always, God is good. Peace.